So far we've shown you hero cars. Today I'm going to show you one of the most famous villain cars, a red and white Plymouth Fury from the movie Christine. This is only one of two screen-used Christines still in existence. Wish me luck. I didn't want a 57 Chevy. I wanted a 50s car. You know, I was that kid that everyone picked on. Well, the 57 and the 58 Plymouth was disliked by a lot of people because the Chevy was the ruler of the road. My first car I found was a 69 Pontiac convertible. My parents were upset that I dragged this thing home. I was 14 and a half, and I spent hours and hours and hours restoring this car. It's ultimately ruined by some um, jocks from school who didn't like me. And my auto shop teacher told me, you should read this book. It is so you. They nicknamed that car Christine. So I read the book, and it was a four-door Plymouth. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a two-door? So at the time I was looking for a two-door hardtop, Eddie Volker was looking for John Carpenter to find all the Christines. Everywhere they could find through ads, they were buying up every single car. So naturally, a 16-year-old kid, good luck. So Al Newman invited me to his shop. Then he's, oh, well, we do movie cars, blah, blah, blah. And I want Christine. So he goes, well, let me make some calls. This car comes home on a flatbed truck on a Saturday morning, and it was the biggest pile of broken parts that you've ever seen. And my dad was just like, you can't even drive this car. What did you do? And I'm like, well, I'll take care of her. Don't worry about it. And I called back Al, and, and he just kind of chuckled and said, well, you wanted Christine. You got her. So he took me over to Bill and Ed's in Chino, California, and he said, have at it. There's about 22, 23 wrecks back there of Christine. $20 a car load, go ahead, take whatever you want. I wanted the car to be functional, and that's probably something I got from my dad. The years I spent putting her together, staying up really late, I mean, I was spending nights and nights and nights working on this car, listening to the 50s music, hoping one day she'll be finished. So it's almost like living the movie. She's like uh, Christine of all of her sacrifice sisters, almost kind of like, if there was demons in those cars, guess what, they're all in here now. So before we set off, uh, Martin did give me a warning that Christine tends to have a bit of an attitude with people. So she could kick me out of the car at any moment. Clutch in, first gear, a little bit of a grind, not too bad. Brake out. Whoa, she sounds good. Slowly out with the clutch and on. Smooth sailing. It's quite an honor to drive Christine right now because Martin has told me that he's only let three people drive this car. It's a cruiser, it has the classic tail fins from the 50s. Do you really want to go fast? No, I don't want to go fast. There's so many little details in this car that just speaks to the 50s. The skinny steering wheel, the bench seat, and just the perfect, perfect chrome just speckled throughout the interior of this car. I have a collection of props from actual people that may have worked on the film. I was given a jacket, that's Christine on it. It was the jackets they wore on the set. One guy sent me a slate and he said, don't mess up the chalk because that's the way I got it. Many of the screen used parts that were damaged on the car, I've kept, like the front V emblem was destroyed. Well, I had a fan build me a shadow box out of this part. I've been able to meet some of the stars that were in the movie and they've all signed the glove box of the car. Uh, Keith Gordon, Alexander Paula, uh, John Carpenter himself. I mean, wow, he had time for me. That's pretty cool. Martin's told me that Christine likes to play tricks on people. Anytime someone's around it, something will happen, you know, that things will fall over, doors will unlock. And for being a villain, for being a mean, vicious killer of a car, she's super smooth, soft. Clutch her again. There you go. Go ahead. Am I in? Go ahead. Get, get the gas. Get clutch. There you go. Oh. Gosh, being mean. Go oh. There we go, now it's out. Ever since my youngest was talking, he never referred to the car as a car. He called her Christine. And I hope to pass it along to him because these cars are gone. My kids' kids can say, wow, this was great grandfather's car from the movie Christine and she'll live on. My collector car editor where I work tells me she's a million dollar car. And if I was offered a million dollars, I'd probably say no. Instead of getting power and speed, you're rewarded with smooth ride, 
a great sound, and just a great experience. Now, how did everyone drive in the 50s? Arm out the window. <laughs> Why? Because it's cool. It's like my history is in this car, my life. I've, I, my first dates were in this car. Some of the, uh, my best friends have ridden in this car that are gone. My dad, who I loved very much, who hated the car when I got it, but was so proud. Yeah, my son built this car, but they didn't see the side of him going, if, when he doesn't know it, I'm gonna tow it back to the junkyard, you know? And my mom, who uh, devout Catholic, who would never ride in the car, but I finally did get her in the car one time and said, see, Mom, Christine likes you. And then she stalls at the light, and I had to call AAA. <laughs> it's like, she's just playing with you, Mom. So a lot of my life is in this car. And um, I, I do have to put seatbelts in her now, although Christine is going, no, they were an option. I don't need them. But I have little ones now, so, you know. Yes, you're getting seatbelts. Thanks for watching.